Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84, and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at something really cool and really quite special. My good friend Sean from the Action Retro YouTube channel, you probably have heard of him, has sent me something to take a look at. Unfortunately, he got a super cool upgrade for one of his computers, and it just was dead on arrival. Now, he knew going in that it was as is and untested, but he really hoped he could get it to work. So Sean and I got to talking and I said, well, you know what, why don't you send that to me because I'll be able to take a look at it under the microscope and see if I find anything that could be causing any problems. So he did just that and he sent this along. So let's open this box and see what he sent. Junk, junk, more capacitors. Action Retro? Action Retro? Where have I heard that name before? Action Retro? Yeah! Alright, so let's take a look at what Sean has sent me. I think you'll find it's really cool. This is a Daystar Digital PowerPC 601 100 megahertz upgrade card for 68K Macintosh computers. Very, very cool. Now, unfortunately, Sean got this for a good price. He still paid a lot for it, but it didn't work. So that was very, very frustrating. So that's why he sent it to me to take a look at. Now, if you know anything about old Macs, you likely know about Daystar. Daystar Digital made a lot of very cool upgrades and accelerators for Macintosh computers. And some of those cards can still command a high price today. Now, the first thing I noticed when I pulled this card out of the box because the heatsink was separated from it was that I saw bent pins on the corner of this processor. So clearly, whoever removed this card from an older computer or whatever the case was, they managed to bend those pins, which is a little mind boggling because this heatsink actually protects that area. You can't really touch the pins on, unless you took this off weirdly or whatever. So I saw that immediately and I thought, hmm, maybe that's a problem here. Maybe it's just some simple bent pins and maybe that's the issue that is causing this processor card to not want to work correctly. So when I looked at this thing under the microscope, I noticed those bent pins weren't really adhering to the solder. I don't know if it was just old solder or the solder paste or whatever that they were using was now decaying, but they weren't making a good connection and those legs were just wiggling freely, uh, not touching anything on the board. So obviously these processor legs where they were bent, they were bent enough to break them off of the solder. So I had to fix that. So I looked at this under the microscope and I noticed that it was a little bit worse than I was expecting. Some of the pins next to those legs weren't connected either, but it was all in that same corner. So I thought the, the damage here was isolated to that area. So I painstakingly fixed this area under the microscope. It was very difficult to do and it looks like my hands are shaking a lot here, but we're just zoomed in very, very close. Now I was able to fix that area and I thought, all right, now we got to test this. So how was I going to test this? I don't have a Quadra 700. Well, thankfully, the slot that this plugs into, this PDS slot, was on a few other machines in the Quadra 700, and I have quite a few of them. Now, I was trying to think, what machine do I have easy access to where I could just plug this in and see if it works? And the first one I thought of was, well, this Sentra 650. Now, it does have part of its case off, that's off in another part of the basement here, but the machine does work. So I plugged the card in and I turned the machine on. But unfortunately I didn't get a startup chime or anything. So I removed the card and the computer booted up great, except there was no video on the screen. And this made me realize the LCD screen I was plugged into was not 100% happy with this computer. So I dragged out my Apple CRT monitor and sure enough, when I plugged that in, this thing booted up just fine. Now, obviously something was still wrong with this card. So I thought to myself, let me take another look at this processor card and make sure there aren't other problems surrounding the chip or any of these chips here or anything on the back. Now the capacitors looked to be in good shape and they were tantalum, so I didn't think they needed to be replaced. However, when I inspected the pins around the entire processor, I found that there was a problem. Even more of those pins were not making a connection to the card itself. There were dozens of pins just dangling around, not touching anything. So I went through carefully with my soldering iron and made some very, very careful joins of these pins onto the pads. This was tedious work, but I knew all those pins had to be securely connected if this card had any chance of working again. So now, after those repairs were done, I plugged this card into my Sentra 650. Here goes nothing. Hmm. Oh my goodness, 
it chimed. It chimed. And it chimed. Well, sort of. So we got into the Mac OS and I ran some software and it still detected that this PowerPC card was not active. So I was like, what's the case with this? What's going on? So apparently you need software. However, it's not as simple as just installing drivers. Well, at least not just yet. The Macintosh system software, or the Mac OS, on your system must be updated to take advantage of the PowerPC processor. This is because the version of the Mac OS installed on your Mac is likely only designed to work with the Motorola 68000 series processor. So unless you specifically installed a universal version of the Mac OS, you need to update it. Thankfully, this doesn't require erasing your entire system and starting from scratch. All you need to do is run the System 7.5 or later installer. In this example, we're using System 7.6. From the installer, you select the Custom Install option. Then select the option System for any Macintosh or Universal System. This will ensure that both 68K and PowerPC components will be installed on your computer's hard drive. Then select Install, and your Macintosh will be updated with the appropriate software. Once you've done that, now you're ready to install the drivers for the Daystar PowerPC upgrade card. So this is a Daystar Power Pro 601. So I found the appropriate drivers for this, and I was able to install them. And there's a toggle on the control panel that enables or disables this card. So I thought, ah, that's the key. So I switched it to PowerPC mode, and I restarted the system and nothing. The machine rebooted and it was still not detecting this card. So I'm scratching my head there and I thought, well, what could be going on with this thing? Let me take another look. Uh, maybe it's not seated properly. So I shut down the machine, I unplugged the card and I plugged it back in. And then I turned it on and I heard a very different startup chime. That's right, the PowerPC card was now starting up. So it turns out, that I just didn't understand the control panel. It actually clearly says that you have to shut down the machine, not restart it, in order for the changes that you set in that control panel to take effect. So I was switching from the 68K processor on board of the Centrus to the PowerPC one here, and a simple restart didn't do it. I had to shut down the machine, per the instructions, and boot it up. And from then on, it worked great. I heard that classic Power Macintosh upgrade startup sound, and I was very happy to see this thing actually work again. So I ran some benchmark tests, and surprise, surprise, this thing was much, much faster than the built-in 25 megahertz 68K processor in this Centra 650. Now I know everybody likes benchmarks and all, but I thought let's do some real world tests to see how this thing actually operates. So I thought of two tests. One would be decompressing or unstuffing an archived file, and another would be to play a game of Doom 2. Now when I first started this off I did not see too much of a difference, but by playing back this footage you could easily see that the PowerPC chip is just ripping into that file and going much faster than its 68K counterpart. I picked Doom 2 because it's both a 68K and PowerPC aware application. Now I didn't expect it to run that well on the 68K processor, but it actually runs okay. It is choppy and it's a bit laggy, but it is playable if you have a high tolerance. Now of course, using the PowerPC processor, things are much, much smoother. It's very responsive, you get a better feel for it, and although I'm not the best at this game, as you can clearly see here, it was a lot of fun to play and the PowerPC chip just makes it much easier to do it on this particular machine. So in these short tests you can see that using the Daystar 601 PowerPC processor upgrade can give your system a real speed boost. 
Now, today it may make more sense to acquire a faster PowerPC Macintosh rather than upgrading a 68K machine that has a slower bus and slower I.O. But back in the day, this was a viable option if you didn't want to spend big bucks on a brand new Mac. I am super excited I got this thing to work again. I know Sean is just as equally excited because I was giving him the play-by-play -play and messaging him along the way of what I thought of this thing, what I was trying, if I could get it to work, etc. Now we did have some trouble on the side of this poor little centrist computer here trying to get this card to work, but it was clearly a software issue and once that was resolved, this thing worked great. So I'm very excited that we got this thing up and running. It's always nice to be able to save these rare accelerators, especially if they are sold in questionable state. And Sean was so excited that we got this working that he said I could keep it and hang on to... No? No? Well, I tried anyway. But I'm very excited to see what he does with this card. Hopefully he'll be able to install this in his Jurassic Quadra 700 and we'll see this thing run circles around the competition. So thankfully, another curse has been lifted on an action retro item. Thanks for the challenge, Sean. So I hope you enjoyed this video at me trying to fix and successfully succeeding on fixing this Daystar 601 PowerPC processor card. If you like these videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. Also give us a thumbs up as that helps our channel grow. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. My handle is Mac84TV. If you want to support me on Patreon, you could do that as well. For as little as a dollar a month, you support my archiving efforts and you get behind the scenes videos and exclusive content you can't get anywhere else. But that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you right here next time on Mac84.